So I'm going to switch things up a little bit. I want to talk about your spiritual advice first before we go into the love reading. Because I feel like for the past few weeks, your love life fluctuates. It's good one week, it's bad the next. And so I feel like talking about the spiritual advice and why we are creating these patterns in our lives would be really helpful before we talk about the love reading. Because I feel like this is more important anyways, okay? So let's talk about this. And this is, you You have three kings, and whenever the three kings come up, I usually think of it as people around you who are experts in their field. They're trying to help you, and uh, you're resisting so badly. You're resisting so much. And so I feel like it needs to be said, okay? Um, so let's talk about this. This is you, right in the middle, four of pentacles hanging on to a situation way past its expiration date. And what else is new with Scorpio? You guys have trouble letting things go. Situations, people, friends, uh, relatives, whoever it is that once you form that emotional connection, once you allow them into your the inner sanctum, once you share your deepest, darkest secrets with them, you cling on to them for dear life. And I feel like for some of you, you might not want the secrets getting out, but for others, it's just this emotional bond that you have with another person. And once it's there, it's so hard for you to let go. This card is also about control. It's about like being stubborn and not letting other people help us. And, and then asking, you know, why am I so alone with all my struggles? Why aren't people, you know, reaching out and helping me? Why aren't they asking me how I'm doing? A lot of the times you guys are so like self-contained and, and self-sufficient and independent that even if you're struggling, you don't share that with another person. Only those that are closest and dear to you, you share it with them. And so what I feel here is the fact that, you know, you have to understand people cannot read your mind. If you want to reach out, you have to be, you, you need to reach out and, and be vulnerable and let people in. And at the same time, I feel like with this card, it is all about stubbornness, doing things our way, feeling like our way is the best. And even though our methodologies might be very outdated, might not be relevant or even applicable to what we're dealing with. So for example, um, if you're... I don't know if you're if you're trying to finish a master's thesis, okay, and you have like your advisor here who's telling you you should do this so that it becomes a little bit more relevant, so that a lot of people would read your paper, and because they find it timely and they find it you know applicable to whatever is happening right now, and then you have another. Uh, advisor like another teacher or another professor who's like you should do it this way because this is going to sell this is going to be more exotic and um possibly even more enticing to the public and then you have another person who's giving you expertise you know you should structure it differently you should make it like more chronological order you should make it like easier to digest you should use layman's terms but whoever it is that's coming in offering you these uh, snippets of advice, you're not listening because you have it in your head that I'm going to do it this specific way, that my way is the best way. And keep in mind, these are kings. They're expert in their field. They know how to sell things. They know how to do things. They know how to, they just have a lot of experience and expertise. And that, that's what makes them kings. That's what makes them the master of their craft. And it's a situation where, you know, um, the old way is dying. And you need to allow new things to come into the picture. So at the end of this, we have here the sun, and the sun is newness, rebirth. It's a, a, a breath of fresh air that's coming into a situation, allowing new energies to flow in. And if you see, it's a child. It's somebody that is um, basking in the achievement, in the glory, in the, the warmth of the sun. So it, it's almost like we have a situation where it takes a, um, possibly three parties 
to bring everything to fruition. But one person is refusing to budge, okay? And it could even be another person you're dealing with rather than you. It could be another person who's so stubborn, who's so like dogmatic, and who's just so stuck in their ways. And they don't see that they're the problem. And everyone is trying to succeed. Everyone is like on the same boat. Everyone is going in the same direction, wanting to have this professional success. And one person is resisting and that person is proving to be a very weak link or their self-sabotage is affecting the performance of the entire group. So I feel for some of you, um, you're stuck to a specific person or an idea and your family members, your dearest friends are against it. Okay, And then for others, you're working with other people and there is a weak link amongst you and you're, you guys, the other two might be like, so for example, there are four people. The other person might be like, let's cut them out. Let's cut this, he or she, let, let's cut them out of our group because they're not pulling their weight. And you're just advocating for this person because you care, right? But if they're a weak link and they're affecting everything else, you kind of have to look at what is the best policy here? What is the best course of action for the greater good rather than your own personal um, entanglement with this person? What is the ultimate, you know, like what's the greater good that can be achieved and what should I do to achieve that greater good? And I feel like somebody's not pulling their weight and they need to be weaned out and you have to allow change to happen and to allow a breath of fresh air to come into the picture. Um, so I feel like in the work environment, I'm going to find the other king. I'm going to find the other king. And um, I just want to show you something. So in general, where in your life have you kind of been holding on to things? And where in your life have you been kind of like stubbornly and dogmatically clinging on to it? Past is expiration date. And many of you are going to say relationships because you guys are notorious for doing that too. But I also feel like um, being stuck in your ways, that can also be very problematic and not heeding the advice, not asking for advice, being too proud, being too stubborn to ask people for, you know, for help, ask people for assistance. So I feel like you have the support around you. So if we replace that with the last king, right? You have all the kings in the deck. They all come together with a very specific skill set. One of them might be the visionary, you know, and I feel like it's you that's the visionary. You have this idea that if everything, um, if we want to achieve, you know, greatness and success, Everyone has to like like each other and, and the energy and the vibe needs to be, you know, um, needs to jive well. We need to like connect on that emotional level. That's not always the case. This is a, a, a king here that's missing with the king of pentacles. The king of pentacles gets things done. So if there's somebody in their, uh, in, in the group or in this situation, who's not really pulling their weight, replace them with somebody else that can pull their weight. Replace them with somebody that is a man of their words that, you know, um, when they say they're going to do something, they follow through. They're not flaky and they take full responsibility. So I feel like there's somebody here who has a little bit of a victim mentality. It's never them. It's always circumstances around them. And I feel like you've, um, you, you are understanding of that. And then the other people are not, and you're just advocating for them. But the bottom line is they're not pulling their weight. And it's, stop, it's time to stop, you know, making excuses for them, okay? And then you likewise. It's time for you to stop living in this emotional space and wasting a lot of time because of these emotional ties and to really take care of your financial situation more than anything. Because like you see your peers, you see your friends, you see your coworkers, you see everybody around you moving forward, um, reaching a state of, you know, um, professional success and achievement. 
And I feel like you're so stuck in emotional situations where it, it's, it's, you're leaking energy in emotional relationships and emotional ties, and you're not giving enough energy to your work to your practical responsibilities towards building long-term uh, st stability for yourself and building that foundation of wealth for yourself because your energy is dissipating towards you know helping other people taking care of other people and there's very little energy left for you so your spiritual advice in general if you want to reach this state of success maybe you need to be a little bit more selfish maybe you need to you know Look after yourself because all the people around you, they're capable and competent enough to do it themselves. They don't need you to baby them. They don't need you to um, give so much of yourself away. Okay, so let's build on this. Let's build on this King of Pentacles. I feel like, you know, you're at a good space emotionally. You're very loving and giving. And the next step is for you to start to build up this wealth. So let's talk about your relationship. And I feel like the relationship sector has been one of the more turbulent areas for a lot of Scorpios, a lot of water signs, because I feel like a lot of the times, you know, we can't really help who we're attracted to. We can't really help who we care about, but we need to be discerning when it's a bad relationship when the relationship is draining the life out of us or when the relationship itself is um and you know one good example of this is for whatever reason right uh you could be very financially well off they could be very financially well off but for whatever reason when you get together the union between the two of you is off and so as soon as you're together financially you're drained or financially they're drained that's a good sign that it might not be a good relationship for you. That's the sign that for sure something is off about this union because karmically it's not meant to be. And so if you f see these signs and you know it could be other signs, whatever signs that you see and you don't cut it off, you get too deep in it and then it's hard for you to pull out, right? So take better care of yourself. Okay, so let's talk about your relationship sector because that's also very problematic here. We have, first of all, your energy. We have the Page of Swords. This is communication that is almost like competitive. It's like um, picking at a situation, wanting to pry, wanting to look at the other person, wanting to figure out what they're up to, asking follow-up questions, and it almost feels like an interrogation where... Um, when you have your eyes set on finding the truth or you have your um, a specific course of action that you're very set on, I feel like for many of you, you don't let it go. You don't know how to um, stop crying. You don't know how to, you know, um, you just doggedly go after the truth. And a lot of the times it can create um, barriers between you and the people that you're dealing with, okay? You might as well be dealing with an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. This is somebody that is a little bit younger. This is somebody that I also feel they're not a very emotional type of a person, okay? Uh, they move on fast, and they also talk very fast. And they can also be, like, they're great at problem solving. They're great at computers. They're great with technology. They're great with communication. But I also feel this is a, a an energy of somebody that is not like a good fit for you. And I feel like for many of you, you might have moved away from this person. We have here the Ten of Wands, dropping the burden, okay? Dropping the burden. The relationship itself might have been very burdensome for you or the other person. And I feel like no matter what you do, it, it was um, falling apart at the seams, right? If she were to just uh, pick up that one stick that's on the ground, she might lose her balance and, you know, drop everything and then it would come crashing over her and she might be severely injured. So this is a situation where I feel like it's a delicate balance of communication and it's a delicate balance right now because you have other areas in your life that you need to focus on and this relationship 
It just doesn't need to be a stressor in your life while you're dealing with other things, okay? So be smart about it. Cut your losses and carry those wands with you away from the situation. And then once it's safely stored away, you can come back and pick up that other piece. Or you can just leave it alone because you have enough on your plate to deal with. Does that make sense? So picking your battles and, you know, cut your losses and stop investing in people that are not giving you that emotional reciprocity. We have as well the lovers, and this is greatly about choices and decisions, okay? Um, it's a very big Gemini vibe as well with this card, and I mentioned air sign earlier. So the lovers is, um, it's, a, it's a very, very, um, like a, a really strong attraction between two people. They might like the same hobbies, they might like the outdoors, they might like, um, you know, the companionship. And um, I feel like you and another person, there might be great communication. You know, you can talk about anything under the sun. You enjoy, like, doing activities together. You really enjoy each other's company. But what I'm also feeling with this card is it deals with third party interfering in a relationship because the lovers is, once again, deciding between options, deciding between choices. And you have either, on either side of you, options. Do I get deeper in this and then deal with the separation and get hurt? Or do I cut my losses right now and just, you know, save my dignity, save myself from being hurt? But on the one hand, I feel really, you know, chemically drawn to this person. And so I see you oscillating back and forth. You know, do I want to get hurt another time? Do I cut my losses? What do I do about this situation? And I mentioned for you before, you have trouble letting go. Scorpios, uh, fixed signs in general, but I feel like with Scorpios, you guys have a really hard time. Once somebody has, um, you know, emotionally captured your heart, it's really hard for you to just say like, um, oh, screw them, you know, I don't need them. It's You might say that out of uh, resentment, but you don't really mean it. You don't really feel it. And so it's hard for you to let people go. And so what I'm feeling is you need to take a stance on this and you need to, you know, save yourself the heartache and the disappointment and the separation and the drama and just move away from it because you have other things that are um, in the future for you, okay? You have people that might even be better for you. You might also have a lot of career success that are in store for you. So there's no need for you to kind of like, you know, masochistically stay in a situation where it's a lot of work, where there's a lot of heartache. Um, I feel like if you're dealing with an air sign, there's a lot of pain associated with this air sign. You guys might have already broken up. So Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and I feel very strong Gemini vibe. If you're dealing with a fire sign, you might, uh, so fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, you might feel, you might have been neglected by them. You feel the neglect. And they have a lot of things going on with them. They have a lot of things going on in their life. They have so many um, projects that they're working on. They have so much responsibilities piling on them. They're barely able to keep afloat, taking care of themselves, going home, going to work, going home, back and forth, etc. And they're trying to achieve, you know, greatness. They're trying to achieve, like, um, that, that financial stability for themselves. And so don't be mad at this person. If it's a fire sign that is um, a little bit, you know, um, MIA this week, mainly because they're trying to get things started in their own lives so that they can secure a better future for you. So if you're feeling that emotional neglect, I feel like it's unfounded, okay? But if you're dealing with an air sign in particular, there might be a third party in the picture. There might be somebody else. And I'm also sensing, you know, it's causing you a lot of pain. And so you just need to move on from it. And you need to um, accept at face value if something is not working. If something is working, it should not cause you pain and heartache and suffering and, and confusion. So 
if something is not working, it's not meant to be, and it's time for you to redirect your energy. Maybe it's not the right time right now, so redirect your energy towards focusing on your career. Don't let your energy leak out and dissipate, and that's when that happens, when you're giving your energy away, that's when you stop being able to manifest the things that you want because you're so focused on that relationship. You're so focused on somebody else's well-being. You're so focused on fo taking care of the other person, defending the other person, that you don't really have the energy left for you to manifest things, to listen to your intuition, to follow what your guides are saying. And I feel like this has been an ongoing theme. And so for you to get back on track where, you know, the weekly readings, where it's not, it's good one week and then bad the next, is for you to start to contain your energy so that you can direct it in one specific area of your life. Fix that. And once that's, you know, once you get the ball rolling, once the wheels are in motion, then you can direct your energy towards fixing another sector of your life. So we have to do things in quadrants and we have to do things in a very systematic manner in order for us to achieve success, okay? You can't just, um, well, learn to compartmentalize. You can't just let one area leak into the next and ex expect yourself to be okay because I feel like there's a lot of energy wasted clinging on to bad relationships, clinging on to bad situations, and you have to let it go, okay?